Hi, and welcome to this live reading from Softest Touch by Adina D. Gray. And this is presented by Itsy Bitsy Book Bits. Chapter one, Derek. Four months away from home has felt like breathing fresh air. Although I decided to take a year off, I couldn't resist returning early. And now I find myself standing in front of Wilson Creations. I'm pretty sure I'll hear some complaints about my return, but I'm not a beach and cocktail kind of guy. After parking my Maserati Gran Turismo, I walk into the building, greeting the doorman. New York Fashion Week is a few months away, and Wilson Creations will be presenting the new collection I've been working hard on. Not having the final piece drives me insane. That's why I took a few months off. I hoped it would help me find new inspiration, but it never happened. I didn't want to waste more time, so now I'm back to ensure everything is in order, even if it's 7 p.m. While I do trust my brother and his wife, life has taught me that it's better to handle things myself. Derek, what are you doing here? My brother James asks as soon as he I crossed the threshold of my office. I was getting bored, so I came back. I shrugged, taking off my jacket. What do I have to do to get rid of you? <laughs> you can't, I laugh and sit at my desk. How are things going? Are we ready for New York? Yes, we're just looking for two more models. Otherwise, everything is fine, and we need to choose the dress for the finale. Perfect, I say, glancing at some folders on the desk. Did you find me a new assistant? Sienna took care of it, at least I think so. His cheeky grin says more than he wants to. I'm not sure if I should be more concerned that your wife chose an assistant for me or that you're not certain about it. Yeah, he chuckles while rubbing his neck. Let's just say, with her raging hormones, it's better not to disagree with her. Could we do that before her pregnancy? I asked James, who lets out a hearty laugh. Could you do what? Sienna asks as she enters the office, followed by a stunning girl. Welcome back, Derek. I knew you'd be back sooner than planned. You know me well. I hug her before peering at her rounded belly. You look amazing. And you're such a bad liar, Sienna rolls her eyes at me. I feel like an elephant. Yes, but a sexy one, James replies, taking a playful slap from Sienna. Anyway, since Ella has retired, I've found you a new assistant. She moves further while turning toward the girl. Meet Melinda Jackson. I've already shown her everything she needs to know. Sienna winks at me, knowing how picky I am with my colleagues and how well prepared they have to be. Melinda, this is Derek Wilson. Nice to meet you, sir. She extends her hand. I briefly look at her and sharply exhale. She looks like a stunning porcelain doll, fragile and ready to break. Even if her beauty doesn't go unnoticed, I can't afford newbies just for the sake of it. She's not fit for this job. She's too young and definitely not what I'm looking for, I tell Sienna as I sit back in my chair. No offense, Miss Jackson, but I don't like wasting time. You don't know anything about me, and yet you judge me? She fires back. How do you know I'm not suitable for the job? Calmly, I pick up a pen to sign some papers and then peer at her. I've been working in this field for so many years that I assure you, you won't last a week here. Try me, she challenges me. Instead of judging, let me show you how much I'm worth. Melanie, no, I'll stop you right away, she approaches, placing her hands flat open on my desk. I'm not going to be treated like a fool. I'm not a kid, and I've worked hard not to have the door slammed in my face by the first person who thinks they know everything about me after a glance. Her confidence and determination pique my curiosity, not to mention her attitude. The power her body radiates can't be missed, and the fire in her eyes burns into mine. My heart flutters, and my gut tells me to keep her. Okay, I stare back at her, holding up my index finger. One week, but if you can't do your job, you'll be fired. Her eyes widen in surprise. For real? Do I look like someone who's kidding? I ask, raising an eyebrow. Mm, no, sir. Nervously, I flick the pen over my finger. Well, you'll start now. Bring me all the sketches for the New York parade. Yes, sir, she nods, heading to the door. Her backside, perfectly wrapped in the jeans she wears, makes me grit my teeth. And, Melanie, I call her back. I don't want to see you wearing jeans. I, no problem, sir. And my name is Melinda, she points out before storming out of the door. Is there a need to be such a dickhead? James questions, narrowing his eyes at me. I was sincere, not a dickhead. I grinned back at him. In this industry, time means money, and I don't want to waste a single minute. Yeah, I'm sending you her resume so you'll know more about her, Sienna says as she walks out of the office, shaking her head in disapproval. James sinks into the stool opposite me. 
Derek, you need to get laid, man. Fuck you, James. I mean it. You were rude and arrogant. I've never seen you like this. He gestures with his hand. What the hell happened? As the sun sets, bathing the city in its orange light, I sigh and look out the window before bidding. She is young and inexperienced. To work here, you don't need nice legs and a pretty face. I need competent people. I'm sorry to contradict you, but she is more competent than you can imagine. You're judging her without even knowing her skills, James continues. Not to mention, she's a Jackson, and you can imagine their education level. The Jackson family has a reputation that speaks for itself. They are part of the elite even after the tragic accident that happened a decade ago. They still are involved in each charity event. I haven't seen her much around, nor have I heard much about their daughter after their death, but everyone knows the Jackson family is like an institution in Washington, D.C. Melinda knocks on the glass door, and I signal her to come in. Mr. Wilson, the meeting room is ready. Confused, I peer at her. Ready for what? I don't miss her whirling eyes, but she sighs as James and I both get up and follow her into the meeting room. You asked me for the sketches for the New York parade, and I set them up here, she says as she opens the door. Not only did she bring me the catalog for each dress, but also the dresses on the dummies. I'm speechless. Thanks, I mumble as she leaves. Mm -hmm. I'd say she did a great job for being an inexperienced person. Yeah. Well, I'm taking Sienna out for dinner since it's almost dinner time. See you tomorrow. He pats my shoulder before leaving me alone. Rolling up my sleeves, I approach the dummies and begin checking that everything is done perfectly, noting the minor changes I've asked for have been executed flawlessly. When I've finished, I turn off the lights and head back to my office. Melinda is at her desk, typing frantically on her keyboard. When she looks up and sees me pass by, she hands me some sheets. I transcribe the messages you received today. Thank you, I say as I walk into my office. I read the messages and reply to them as well as some emails. Feeling tired, I check the time and notice it's past 10 p.m. Deciding to call it a night, I grab my jacket and head toward the elevators, bumping into Melinda. I catch her arm, preventing her from falling backward. I didn't think you were still here. Melinda meets my gaze and her eyes captivate me with their unique color. She takes a deep breath before speaking. I'm sorry, I've cleaned up the meeting room and prepared it for tomorrow's meeting at 9 a.m. Realizing I'm still holding her, I release my grip. There was no rush. You could have done it tomorrow. Tomorrow at 8 a.m., you have a meeting with the suppliers in room two, and at 9 a.m. here, I wouldn't have had the time. She reminds me of all my morning commitments. Do you need anything else? No. I shake my head once again, surprised by her knowledge of my agenda. Get your stuff and let's go home. It's late. Okay, she whispers as she picks up her bag and jacket. We take the elevator together, and her perfume tickles my nostrils. It's sweet, floral, and a little spicy. Where's your car? I ask her, holding the door for her before leaving the building. I'll take a taxi. Good evening, Mr. Wilson, she says as she walks away. Miss Jackson, I call her back. I'll take you home. I can't leave you alone at this hour. Nice of you, but no thanks. She gestures for a taxi to stop and gets in. Standing there feeling foolish, I watch the taxi drive away. Then I shake my head and walk to my car. The trip home is short, quite short, and as soon as I open the door, Sissy runs up to me, wagging her tail. Hey, I missed you too. I bend down to cuddle her. Shall we go for a walk? I ask, grabbing her leash as she happily hops.